Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I wasn't going to make a video about this, but I figured I should probably just put this out here. Um, so I'm working on Repo Jeep. Here in the background, got it on the lift. Um, the project for today, and actually for part of yesterday too, was installing the Volvo um, locker. Um, it's technically a, a limited slip. But installing that into the front of your Dana 30 Jeep. So this will work for the ZJ uh wj no excuse me not wjs zjs xjs and tjs because uh, they all share the dana 30 front end uh volvos in the early 90s they use a dana 30 rear end and so some of them came with a quote-unquote locker so um i've got it installed uh some people have said that you know it might not work um a couple videos online have shown it that it does and there it is so it's installed. Uh, you use the Jeep gears, Jeep bearings fit right on it. It's 27 splines, so everything works. The only thing you have to do as far as a modification is on the driver's side axle, just have to chop about 3 eighths of an inch off of this. Um, probably could get away with less. One of the other videos I watched on this, he said he did 3 eighths, that's what I did. Um, so, Basically, just wanted to uh, do one take on this, show you that it can be done, and uh, we'll see how it works on the trail. So, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I will tell you um, the reason why I went this way instead of just doing a lunchbox locker. Um, if you have um, access to like a lift, and um, I have uh, my cousin who's a mile down the road, he is a certified mechanic. So, uh, he kind of helped me with the gear install, um, but you don't have to set up the pinion because that's the same from Jeep. So that should be, you know, if you need new bearings, now's the time to do it. Mine needed a seal, so I threw in a new, new seal. Everything's good. The um, setup on the case, um, had to play with it a little bit, made um, setup bearings. Highly recommend that. Makes it super easy. You just pop them on and off, change your shims, throw it in there, take it back out. So, um, did have to play around with that a little bit, but that, it really isn't that hard. It's just, you need a couple specialized tools, a uh, good set of calipers, dial indicator, and, um, it's just a little bit of trial and error. And, uh, I mean, it's a little bit more involved than a brake job, but if you take your time and, you know, have some mechanical confidence, you know, you know kind of how to work on stuff, then you could probably do this in your garage like I'm doing. So here's to hoping it doesn't explode on the trail, but you know, only one way to find out is to run it and see. Um, but anyway, going back to um, what I was saying earlier, the reason why I did this as opposed to the lunchbox is, um, I'll walk back here. <clears throat> so let me get this spun here. And my light died. Hopefully you can still see pretty good. Okay. So that's the spider gear side. Let me get to the flywheel side. And sorry I'm doing this on my camera. I forgot my GoPro. But you can see that, that weight spin. this thing spinning. That's a free weight. And there's weights in here as the springs. What happens is one wheel has to spin faster than the other. And that locker will kick in. So it is technically a limited slip because there has to be some sort of slippage for it to engage. But it's mechanical. So there's no clutches. You don't have to put um, any special additives in there, to my knowledge. Might be wrong. But after 25 miles an hour, that free weight opens up and it won't let the locker engage. So when you're on the highway, what happens is if you hit a patch of ice, snow, something like that, where one wheel loses traction, low speeds, it'll kick in. No problem. High speeds, though, it won't. So the lunchbox locker, it'll lock in, doesn't care what speed it's going, and then it'll torque steer you into another lane, another car, um, which could be bad. That would be in the bad category. So this alleviates that. Also, I got it at a junkyard for 40 bucks. I did have to do some digging and searching through a couple of Volvos to find one, but even with the install kit, it's I'm still ahead as far as a uh, lunchbox locker. If this one fails for any reason, I still have the original Dana 30 G from Jeep that I can put back in and um, basically just go back to having open diffs or even if I wanted to throw a lunchbox in there. So, <coughs> excuse me, fighting a cold. 
Um, so yeah, Volvo locker, pretty simple install. I mean, it, it is a gear install, so that is, uh, I'd say probably, you know, the three or four out of five wrenches. Um, it's not a brake job. Um, you do have to have some specialized tools, a little bit of confidence and some know-how, but it's not rocket science. It's just a lot of trial and error. So, um, if you were to pay a shop to do this, it would be more expensive than the lunchbox, but I like the pros of, um, how the, the Volvo locker works. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. If you have any questions, let me know. And I appreciate you watching this little video and, uh, hope to see you on the next one.